One of the main reasons I left Cuba at 18 years old is because I have always been thirsty for knowledge and I wanted to be able to further my education. Well, you might think, wait a second, isn't education free in Cuba? Well, yes and no. After the sixth grade, if I wanted to be able to go on, I would have had to become part of the communist Jews, which meant I would have had to be willing to spy on people and tell on them. Well, because I was not willing to do that, I could not keep studying. So here I was, 18 years of age, and I had only sixth grade. So after a few months in Spain, when we moved to Costa Rica with my parents, I had to start on the seventh grade. I was almost 20 years old by then. I didn't want to go year by year by year, you know, it was too complicated. So I, I studied on my own and I took exams for every subject and of every year from seventh grade until the junior year of high school. And then during the school year, I took the junior and the senior years together. I was going to classes for the junior, junior classes in the morning and for the senior classes in the afternoon. So in a year and a half, I did finish high school. But now I wanted to come to the United States to start a college program in music education. There was only a slight problem. I didn't know any English, nothing, zero. Well, I was ready for a challenge because I wanted to come and start my program. And come I did. Luckily for me, and that's what saved me, I came for the second semester because in Costa Rica classes ended in November. So I came for January. And therefore the college was not set up to give the English proficiency test that they usually gave to foreign students that were coming on a student visa like me. So they decided to let me register on a uh, let's see how she does. Now we are talking 1972, no internet, no Google Translate, nothing of the sort. And I was not the type that learns easily by just going through grammar and vocabulary and things like that. So what I did was I went to the library, I took out children's books, starting with fifth, first grade books, and I went grade by grade going up as I understood and could read whatever the kids in first or second grade will read, I will graduate myself to the next level. And meanwhile, the fellow students in the music program will try to really listen and figure out what I was trying to say. And they will say it back to me in the right way, you know, with the right grammar and the right pronunciation. And my roommate, bless her heart, she, would make me read every evening from a book and she will have to correct every other word at least to tell me how to say it right. Well, I needed to pass all my classes because I was on a foreign student visa and I had to take full 12 credits and I did. By the end of the school year, I passed all my classes and I could understand about half of what was going on now, I didn't take classes that were too complicated. I took math because the math in Latin America is higher level than in the States, so I knew I would understand it. I took Bible, I took choir, I took piano, and I took reading. Now, that one was a bit of a problem because I, <laughs> I found out that it was developmental reading, which meant speed reading. Well, it was me who didn't know how to read in English, and I was taking speed reading. But actually it was not too bad because they were doing big words in the reading, which most of them had Latin roots. So the other kids were struggling more than me because I could say those and understand them better. Go figure. But anyways, I did learn my English. Yeah, you will say she still has an accent. Of course, you can blame it on the Texans I, because that's what I went to college for. No, seriously, it's, it's just to keep me humble and keep me remembering that I do have to keep learning all my life.